Again, here we go. We're live. We're back. We are back. We dropped. We dropped out. Just go ahead and refresh. <laughs> refresh if you can't hear me. All right, friends. I don't know how much of that you heard, how much of that you missed, but my friend, we're back. Okay. Welcome to the Guitar Show. It's day 22 of the 30 day guitar challenge and um, it's Earth Day. So welcome. Friends, as promised, two hours live every day. Today for our beginner lesson, uh oh, where's that? Today for our beginner lesson, we're gonna talk about picks. Very, very shortly, we're just gonna scratch the surface here, just talking about picks a little bit. A lot of folks have issues with their picking hand and sometimes that can be associated with the type of pick that they're using. Now usually, that can be remedied with any pick with practice. But at the same time, I want you guys to understand that the pick that you use is also very important. For the second part of our broadcast today, we're gonna to be talking about modes. And literally what I was just playing there was modal, a modal type of playing. I say that I don't do that hardly at all, which I don't. I hardly ever do it, but in this case here, since we're talking about modes, I thought it'd be a great idea to start off. I was playing in A Dorian, and I was playing the Dorian mode over top of it instead of the A minor scale, which is why it, it sounded a little bit like, not quite like it was just the major scale, if you will, okay? Um, number one, are we live, friends? I gotta I got make sure that we're still live because everything has the appearance that we're not live. It has that appearance that we're not live, which kind of freaks me out. So I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna go back in here into my feed because everything is frozen on my computer. Everything is frozen. So, we're gonna try this another way. Let's try this. Hang in there. Sometimes we have these issues, right, with YouTube. I'm pulling up my iPad though, because sometimes my computer gets squirrely on me and I gotta make sure that we're live. Okay, it looks like we are live. Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much for giving me a second here. For whatever reason, sometimes it's, uh, it's an issue, right? So hang in there with me. What we're gonna be talking about today is picks and we're also gonna be talking about modes or modal playing. So it's kind of mysterious. Folks are like, how do you do this? I'm going to show you how we're going to do this, okay? Um, yeah, dear Lord, if I could just pull up this video, it'd be really cool. Let's say day 22, right? Hang in there. Everything just went down on me midstream here, so hang in there. There we go. All right, there we go. All right, I have another one up here. Blurry for me, but I think, okay, good, all right, all right, we're on, okay? All right, here we go. Not my fault, I'm sorry, it's YouTube. We're at the, uh, we're at the uh, disposal of, of YouTube. Okay, let's jump into some questions. Oh, friends, if you would, if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you have already, then don't do it again. Share the video as well, that would help, and um, what else? What else could you do? Sharing it and then, uh, yeah, subscribing, okay? All those things 
help the channel and then help me help you. Okay, thanks so much. First link below is going to give you access to the PDF. Second link below is going to give you free access to UGS where we're going to be talking about all of this beginner stuff and I'm walking you through it every single day during the month of April. And then the advanced lesson stuff is in UGS Pro. You also could get into that if you would like. No pressure. It's available to you if you want to expand your, your playing. Okay? Good, good, good. All right. Let's do this. Let's talk about picks for a minute. So a lot of you, I hear this all the time, have always heard this. Folks say, hey man, I'm having issues with my strumming hand. Can you help me out? Like, what's going on? Like, why is my strumming hand, why am I dropping the pick? Why does it feel awkward? Three things. Number one, practice. It's always about... Are we back? I think we are. All right. Okay, we're back. All right, we are back. We are back. We are back. Friends, I'm not doing anything different here, so I apologize. I don't know what to, what to tell you. The YouTube gods are not with us today, but let's see. Let's keep going, all right? I'm here for you. I'm committed to you. Picks, let's talk about them. I've got lots of different types of picks, and it's really important that you do the same, that you go to your local music shop and you get some picks. Get some thinner picks, ones that will flex in your fingers like this. So this one, just to kind of give you an idea of the thickness here, this is a 0 0.60. That's millimeters, 0.6, okay? This one's a 0.88, and it's a lot thicker. I can't flex this hardly at all my fingers. I would have to bend it like that. So the difference between a 0.6 and a 0.88 is pretty big, okay? And anything above that is just going to be really thick. I, this one's like a one and a half. This is a dragon's heart pick. And then I have your your typical like medium pick from Epiphone or, or, um, or Fender. Now here's the deal. You want to try these different picks because each one is like a different tool in your toolbox, right? So a good carpenter is gonna have different types of saws, different types of hammers, what have you for different occasions, right? Sledgehammer, if you wanna take out something, and but you don't wanna hammer nails with that, but you don't wanna hammer nails with like one of those little tiny hammers that which you might use in something else, okay? So good to have some different tools in your toolbox. So go to the, go to the store, go to the music store, Get yourself some different picks and play with them. Now here, as a rule of thumb, are some basic ways that you would use thinner picks versus thicker picks. Think if, you're, think if you had really long, curly locks of hair, you wouldn't use a comb. But if you had fewer hairs and they weren't curly, then you could use a comb just fine, right? That's why men use combs a lot of times and women use brushes because they typically have longer hair. Because of that, you want to think about the same thing when it comes to playing guitar. When you're strumming individual notes, like one note at a time, that sort of thing, you would like, it's better to use a thicker pick as a rule just because you're going to be more precise with it. Again, these are different paint brushes in your quiver to pull from. And some folks might want to use a thinner pick, even when they're soloing, maybe to, to play a little lighter, to have some more ability to use their dynamics and that sort of thing. So at the end of the day, the pick that feels best and sounds best to you is the one to pick. So literally anybody who's listening right now, you don't have to ask me what pick to use for what. What pick feels best for you? What pick sounds best to you? It's similar to buying a guitar, to buying the acoustic, buying the electric, like I mentioned. What feels good and sounds good to you? Because what feels good and sounds good to me may not be what you like. You wouldn't ask me what to eat for lunch today, probably. You know what it is that you like. And if I said, oh, I'm gonna have a tofu scramble, you're gonna be like, that's gross, I don't like tofu, or whatever. You have your different tastes. So just think about the same thing when it comes to picks. That being said, Usually, when we're picking single notes, we, as guitar players, gravitate towards a thicker pick. And the more precise our technique gets, typically, as a rule, 
we want to gravitate towards thicker picks. And the reason for that is if we, as the driver of the car, right, are more precise, if our precision increases and our dexterity and our technique increases, we want less variability. We want less variance because now we're relying just on our skills. So a really good race car driver, when they move that wheel just barely, they want it to move barely. When people get on my computer, I have my mouse set at 100% or my, my trackpad. And when they get on my computer, they freak out because the mouse is moving so quick. Well, for me, it's great because I've learned how I just do it a lot. So I've learned to have it at that speed and be able to do everything very quickly and very precisely. Whereas if I were to slow it down, it would make it really cumbersome for me. It's like I have to do this several times to get to the right-hand side of the page. Similarly, with a pick at first, if you're using a thin pick, it's going to be more forgiving for you. But later on, as you become better at picking, then you're going to probably want to gravitate more towards something that's less forgiving because your precision is increasing. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Hopefully so. A uh, another an analogy, a child with training wheels is not going to be as, uh, they're not going to be able to take corners and what have you as quickly as somebody who doesn't have training wheels because the person that doesn't have training wheels, they can lean as they're going into curves and stuff like that. Whereas the person on the training wheel with the training wheels cannot. So does that make sense? There's a reason for both. Do what is comfortable for you. Okay. Very simple, but it's also going to help you out and hopefully help your frustrations. Especially, we talked about strumming and what have you the last few days. And when it comes to strumming, if you're using that thinner pick, it allows you, it, it gives you more flexibility, okay? It keeps you from getting as frustrated because it's more forgiving, okay? All right, excellent. I wanna get to your questions because I know that's a fairly simple subject there, but I really wanna get to your questions. So let's do it. Let me pull this up really quickly. Now that I have a, now that I have my computer up running again, and I see that I missed a donation that just came in. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Gord Dowling. Gord Dowling, appreciate the information. Thanks. You're so welcome, my friend. Thank you for the kind donation. All right, let's do this. Good morning, Eric. I can't stay long, so I wanted to ask the question: When? and when not to play the Aeolian scale. It sounds so perfect with almost anything. Jack, if it sounds good, you know you're doing the right thing, okay? If it doesn't sound good, then don't do it. That's the, the short answer. The more technical answer is the Aeolian mode, that's one of our Greek or jazz modes, right? The Aeolian mode. But by the other name, it's the minor scale, so Aeolian mode or the minor scale, they're the same thing. The minor scale and the major scale and all the modes too could have technically a tonal center, but the real true tonal centers are major and minor. Don, thank you so much for the donation. I really appreciate that and the, and the, the Java there. So there are real, they're really out of the seven notes, there are two very strong tonal centers, major and minor. Just now, what I was doing here, right, with this little track that was playing, I'm playing an A minor and an A minor 7. So what I could do is I could use the Aeolian mode or the minor scale, and it's going to have this sound, something more stable sounding, right? Not as not as wonky sounding as the Dorian, or I should say Dorian is not as stable sounding as the Aeolian, the minor scale, because there's really, truly, what your ear is used to, 99.9% .9 of all the music that you've ever heard is going to be either in a major or in a minor key. Listen to me, 99.99% .99 of all the music that you've ever listened to is in the major or the minor key. Those tonal centers are very strong in your ear, there's not just because you've grown up listening to that music. That's part of it. You've been programmed, right? Like we, like we all have been programmed in ways. Um, not, nece not necessarily anything diabolical. It's just programmed. It's like what we listen to all the time. So you're used to that, right? And at the same time, there's also some harmonic reasons why those keys are tonal centers. 
uh, some math that we could go into that I'm not going to go into because uh, I could I could barely explain it to you, but it's not even anything that's very necessary. But essentially, you have you have notes and you have subdivisions of those notes or harmonics of those notes. And that's why the tonal center in major and the tonal center in minor are so strong, whereas the other ones, they're not so much. That said, here is A minor, A minor seven, and I'm gonna play the Aeolian mode over this, okay? Amber, thank you so much for the donation. And I'm gonna make sure Okay, so she's saying, how do I make sure I have the right pick for my outfit? Seriously, thanks for your free courses and UGS. My playing is so much better because of you. Oh, for your outfit, yeah. Just make sure it matches. Make sure the color matches. I know, everybody likes a good-looking pick, right? Gotta have a good-looking pick. Okay, so here we go. So here's A minor and A minor 7, and I'll be playing A Aeolian over the top, also known as A minor. Let's just call it A minor. It makes it a lot less complicated, right? <laughs> Minor. one note off, okay? Um, in the case of minor versus Dorian, which is a minor type scale because it has the flatted third in it, it is, uh, which we're kind of getting into the advanced lesson here, so I want to get off of this real quick because we need to talk, to talk about this more in the second part of the hour here. But essentially, it's one note off, okay? So I'm going to play this one thing here. We're going to get back to the beginner stuff. So here's, here's Dorian. That's the difference between Dorian and Aeolian, okay? I want to get back to the beginner stuff here. I promised you beginner stuff in the in the beginner here. So, um, so let's get back to that. But I did want to answer that question if I could really quickly for you. Okay, Dorian is a good sounding mode and so is the minor scale. Yeah, Dorian is one of the most stable scales that you could play. That and the Mixolydian, Mixolydian are the two most stable modes that you will find that people will use. Dorian's used a lot, and so is Mixolydian, especially uh, in rock and blues. It's used often. Jez, thanks so much for the donation. Do you prefer a firmer pick for leads? I do. I use, a, I use this .88. Uh, it's a Dunlop Altex, and this is these are my favorite tone. These have a really nice, bright, biting sound to them. I love them. One of my favorite. What all do you put in, what all do you put in your tofu scramble? I put everything in it. Cuz I'll be honest with you, I don't think tofu tastes the best in the world, but I like to put lots of veggies in it. Question, how do how to properly do a bar chord. I tried to do it, but even after trying many times, I still can't get myself to do the bar chords properly. Pokemon fan. Pokemon fan. Pokemon fan. 
There's a lesson in here. Number one, I'll tell you to go watch the effing F chord, but this is your problem, Pokemon fan. Everybody else, where you're having a problem with your bar chords and you're like, I've tried it several times and it won't work. Several times is anywhere from two times to infinity. That's what several means. So it's, it's a real broad stroke. Here's the deal, Pokemon fan. You haven't practiced it enough. And I know that's not what you want to hear. It'd be best if I could just show you, oh, it's because you're not wearing a blue shirt or because you're not dropping your shoulder or whatever. But it's not quite that easy. So watch that video that I'm giving you with the effing F chord. It's easy if you do the right things. But if you don't do the right things, you will never get it. Never, 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 never will you get it if you don't do the right things. If you do the right things, you will, there's never... You never won't get it, okay? But you have to do the right things and you've got to watch that video, effing F chord, okay? I will walk you through it there. But here's the deal. The proof as to whether you've done it enough times, whatever it is in your playing, is can you do it to the degree that you want to do it? If the answer is no, I need a flow chart that says, have I practiced enough? In fact, Mike, let's do this. It's going to be something like this. You know, have I pre? I'm, I won't even do it right now. It's going to take much, too much time. But have you pre have I practiced enough? It's going to point down. Have, does the does the lick sound like you want it to sound? No. Okay. Then go back up here. You haven't practiced enough. You know, and it's just a loop. It's just like that. It does it sound like you want it to do? Yes. Okay. Then you're then you're good. But it always has to do with you haven't practiced enough. I know that's not what you'll want to hear. If you want to hear another guitar teacher that sells you a, a, you know, a pack of lies and says, only thing you got to do is wish, 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 and you're going to be good, then go follow them. Uh, but I'm going to teach you how to play, and I'm going to be honest with you. And the first thing we got to do is we got to be honest, right, about where it is that we are and where it is that we want to go. Because it may be that you don't have the discipline to do it. You probably do have the discipline to do it. I'm not picking on you. I'm saying most of you have the discipline to do it, but some of you may not and that's okay too i'd rather save you the time but i want to encourage you to do it but it always has to do with practice okay do i use a different pick for acoustic you could you know usually a thinner pick for acoustic usually but it's what at the end of the day it's what's comfortable for you And thanks for those that are putting all caps with a question mark. That helps me see a lot better. Percussive guitar is a lot of tapping on the guitar. It has less to do with guitar, more about playing the drums on the guitar. Nothing wrong with it. It just, that's what it is. You're not really playing the guitar. They're playing the guitar and they're tapping on the guitar. What's a really quiet pick for practicing late at night? The thinner the pick, the quieter it's going to be. There are also felt picks. You heard me right, felt, F-E-L-T. So it's like they're literally made of like felt and they're really, really, really quiet. Some people use them for ukulele. Most people play the ukulele with their, with their fingertip and that's perfectly acceptable. Wesley, thank you so much. Eric, I love these live streams. Going to miss them when they're done. Well, we usually do at least one per week. So there's that. And... In, if you're a UGS member, we do an additional three more per month. Okay. <laughs> Gene's saying, uh-oh, Joe Dispenza's coming out. It's true. I've been listening to so much of his Rewired series, which, by the way, if you guys have Gaia TV, G-A-I-A, -A, then watch that Joe Dispenza series, Rewired. Otherwise, on YouTube... Uh, he's got episode one. You could also follow my Twitter because I'm handing out free links to the whole series, but they're only good for 24 hours. So if you're interested in this, check it out because it is a life, it's a game changer. It's a life changer. Amazing stuff. I've used wooden picks, the Thalia picks, I've used them, yeah. Not Thalia specifically, but I've used wooden picks before. I've used metal picks, lots of different different types of picks. And again, it's like, what do you like? If I can instill anything in you besides anything that you want to do on the instrument, you can if you practice and you know what the right things are to practice. That's number one. But the other thing is, don't take the guitar too seriously in that, oh, should I do this or should I do that? It's, there's no rule book that says you should do anything. You are an artist. You are a creative. 
Whether you think this or not, you are. Doesn't matter whether you believe this or not. The more you believe it, then the more creative you'll be. But even if you don't believe it, you're still creative, right? That's why every day is improvised. You don't have it all planned out. You create as you move along, okay? But as a musician, you gotta understand the more you accept that you are creative and there are no rules, you get to do whatever it is that you want, the less you will ask questions like, what's the best? Do I have to do this? Do, should, I, should I not do this? What do you want to do? Now, there are questions that do that will help you move along, especially when it comes to real specific questions like, will this, you know, what's the math for this chord or what's the math for this scale or what have you? Then, then we're talking real specific answers that indeed are definitive, right? Not subjective. All these, most of these other questions, yeah, they're definitely sub subjective. A riff, how to play what's in my head with modes. Play what's in your head. Don't worry about modes. Play what's in your head. It's in your head. Hum it, sing it, then replicate it on the guitar. It takes time though. Anything like this takes time. You're learning how to walk essentially. So it's gonna be wonky at first. You're gonna be all over the place. You gotta press on, you gotta have strength, you gotta have energy, you gotta have desire to press on, to get better, to keep moving. Question, with the pick, do you attack the strings at any particular angle? Nope, the one, that's, the one that's comfortable for you. Some people will hit the strings with a parallel approach, you know, more parallel to the string, and then other people will be more at an angle, like at about a 45 degree angle. I'm more of an angle guy. I've tried to do parallel, and I'm like, eh, doesn't really move me that much. So just play, 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 and you're gonna work into what it is that works best for you. I think if you ask Stevie Ray Vaughan or any of the the, uh, the the tops, right, in their game, Lee, thanks so much for the donation, my friend. Super kind, thank you, bud, as per always, thank you. Glad to be part of UGS, beautiful. So, hi, hi guys. Okay, get in here, buddy, why don't you tell everybody. By the way, friends, it's Earth Day, welcome to Earth Day, uh, happy Earth Day. Here comes Spider-Man. He's got a message for you regarding Earth Day. Come in here, Slick. Did you just take a bath? Yeah. Did you? Come here. Okay, now remember, you got to look up here. That's just what they're seeing. So you look up there. That's where everybody is, right up here. Okay, now tell me, what what are the <laughs> what are the uh, the three, what is it? The three what? Three parts of recycling. Three parts of, of recycling. Can you tell everybody during Earth Day reduce, here? Reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce. Reuse and recycle. Nice, bud. Thanks. Thanks for the PSA. You're welcome, Daddy. Appreciate it, buddy. I love you. Bye, Daddy. Bye. <laughs> oh, that guy. That kid kills me. Oh, I love him. See you, buddy. Eric, as a rule, uh, would you say I would you say I are us easier to play a shorter scale guitar? As a rule, it's probably going to be a little bit shorter for you, but don't think about it as easier. It's not going to, in your mind, it's not gonna feel easier. It's just gonna be shorter, that's all. You may not have to reach quite as far. But I mean, what's the difference between 24.5 and 25.5, right? It's one inch, so it's not that much difference. But yes, it'll be a little bit easier for you to reach, okay? Thank you, Esther, he is, he's a really sweet boy. He is so fun. Really, really, really um, insecure, as you can tell. <laughs> Kid gets so much love and so much energy and so much uh, doting on. He's, he's a mess. How many picks do you currently go through per year? How many when you were gigging? Man, Al, I've never even thought about that. But these picks, these Ultex picks last forever. I could play on one of these for a year, whereas like a traditional pick, maybe I would use it for like a few days or a week or something. These last forever. Ever and they retain their sound. The, on, the only reason I don't use these uh, is when I've worn, just completely worn it out over some time or, or I lose it. These just last so, so long. You didn't get the five, me five fundamentals of music today, I know, right? Uh, melody, harmony, <laughs> rhythm, intensity, Tambor, my kid knows him better than I do. 
Again, I just don't think about stuff like that. I'd have to, I'd have to think about it for a minute. Best legato workout for an intermediate player. Arif, uh, follow my lessons inside of 365. Those are the best. But learn to do your hammer-ons and pull-offs. So take any lick. It doesn't matter what it is. There's no best exercise. The best exercise is the one... Is, is, is learning the lick that it is that you're trying to play. That's the best exercise. If you want to learn the licks for Sultans of Swing and you want to get really good at playing the Sultans of Swings, don't, don't practice exercises. Practice the Sultans of Swing solo. That's your best practice, you know. Number one, thank you so much, Charlie, for the donation, and thank you so much, Shiva. What is the recommendation using picks for the acoustic guitar and picks for the electric? As a rule, thinner picks for the acoustic, thicker picks for the electric. But just as a rule, go with what feels best for you. How to strum nicely without picks using my fingers. You can do that. You're going to suffer with the sound. The sound's not going to be as bright. And I talk about that. The reason that you're not using a pick is probably because you're not used to it. I'm not used to speaking Mandarin because I never learned it. So I'm going to suck at it. I'm more right-handed than I am left-handed. So I do things to recalibrate my brain to get different synapses going. And I will do things with my left hand specifically. I'll brush my teeth with my left hand, clean out the cat box with my left hand. Of course, I've washed my hands in between and what have you. But I'm using my left hand a lot, which is very awkward. But the reason I'm doing it is I'm building these synapses right and I'm building the connection the reason that you're not using a pick is because it's not comfortable for you if you were to carry the pick around with you everywhere we're getting ready to break 600 here by the way my friends so thank you so much for that we just did 602 um, the reason that you're not comfortable with the pick is that you're not carrying it around you're not used to doing it if you would do that you would get used to using the pick however if you're really hell-bent on not ever using a pick for some reason like you just don't want the sound to be very good or you don't want the diversity of using a pick if, if you know if you're okay with that if you're okay with sacrificing your sound and your diversity then you really are hell-bent on not using a pick then you can use your fingers but the reason that it's maybe not sounding the way you want it to is because you're not using a pick but then also it's just practice that's all you know, you're asking me how more practice. That's all it is, really. Eight. <laughs> M. Burner. Sultans of Swing is my goal. How did you know it? But I have, but I have a ways to go. Practice, practice. It's a beautiful solo. Um, I learned those a few years ago, and I love them. It's one of my favorite solos. Love it. Yeah, Esther's saying, when I sing and play together, I completely forget what I should be playing. I find it so hard. Yeah, and I don't know if we talked about it yet, but we did do this like before. Oh, singing while playing guitar. Esther, if you look on day nine of the 30-Day Guitar Challenge, day nine, the second hour, we talked about singing while playing guitar, and I walked folks through this, and it, I think it probably took 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So it was a really intense, detailed lesson on this. Esther, watch that. It will help you immensely in understanding how to break that down, okay? As a beginner, is a whammy bar important when buying a new guitar? Not at all. Not at all. What are the various ways of holding picks on a guitar? Well, you can hold them any way that you want, but the best, the, the way that makes most sense, but again, what do you like, is between the thumb and the first finger. But a, go with what works best for you. I've heard of folks, Eddie Van Halen would hold his pick like this and free up this first finger so he could do his two-hand tapping. And he wasn't so shabby of a player. He still isn't. He's going to make it. So it really has to do with what works best for you, okay? Previn, thank you for the donation. Fake nails versus picks. I don't like to wear fake nails. So I like to use a pick. 
but it really is what what do you like? I know you guys are looking for specific answers on these things, but there is no specific answer. You're asking the difference between how does an orange, uh, oranges or apples? You know, it's like well, what do you want to taste? Do you want to taste a citrus taste or do you want to taste an apple taste? If you're trying to make an apple pie, don't throw oranges in it. Right? If you want to make orange juice, don't use an apple. So it's literally these some of these questions in the way that you're asking them, if they're really broad, I can't I can't serve you. I want to serve you. So you're gonna to have to get specific with the question, okay? Get real specific with the question. The quality of your questions equals the quality of your life. So if you're asking real general questions and you're not getting the answer, you're probably not asking the right question or asking a question that's gonna serve you best. I want to serve you, right? So let me help you out here. Have I ever used finger picks for finger picking? I have. I don't like it personally. That's personal preference. John, thanks for the donation, friend. How far beyond the fingertips do you recommend that the pick sticks out? That's a great specific question. Thank you, Timothy. So, depends on what you want to do. But usually, the, the further the, the pick sticks out, the more it's going to flex in your finger. Also, the more it's going to want to pull out of your fingers right? Because you're not choked up on it. When you choke up on the pick, it's going to be stiffer, but it's also, you're going to have more control of it as well. So those are the, the two or three bits there that you want to keep in mind when you're, when you're doing this, okay? Johnny Highland uses fake nails. Huh, didn't know that. I know Johnny. We've talked. In fact, I was, I'm, I'm trying to get him to do something for the Unstoppable Guitar System, but alas, he doesn't want to come to Nashville anymore. He's really happy in Virginia where he lives now, so he says, I'll, I'll do it, but you got to come here and film me. So I may do that. We may have Johnny in the course. I would love to. Metal picks, your thoughts. I used metal picks for years when I was playing hard rock and metal because it gives a really bright, super sharp sound that was perfect for that, and I love the way it feel, the way it felt, and I... My dad had a feeler gauge. If you know what that is, it's basically like a pocket knife and it has all of these little kind of blades in it, if you will, and it's used to determine the, the, you know, the width of two pieces of something. So if you have two pieces of steel like this, you want to know what the distance in there. You can't get a tape measure in there, so you use a feeler gauge. And the one that fits in there, snug, that's how tight it is, right? And so he had one of these, and I said, Dad, can I use this for making picks and stuff? And he said, yeah. So I cut out a bunch of different thicknesses, and I had all these picks. I don't think I have them anymore. God, where did those picks go? They were awesome. Anyhow, uh, and I used these picks. What was great about them is the sound. I loved the sound. It was real consistent. They didn't break, uh, except the thinner ones did break after a while. But what they would also do is they'd chew up my strings. So I did notice that, that they would actually chew up the strings a bit. And sometimes they would, they would break. Thank you, Gap. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for the donation. Uh, another donation right came in, John. If I didn't mention you, John, thank you. I think I did. Thank you, John. But again, how is your action set and what feels best for you? Uh, Previn, I like my action lower on the lower side, but not too low. Too low, it feels weird. It's it's too easy to play. Yes, I said too easy to play. The strings flap against the neck. I, I don't like it. So there is not a best place. There's what's best for your playing, okay? So don't overthink that one too much. Jez is saying, can I please play the G scale? Yes, here we go. Here's G major. Mm -hmm. So I'm playing, this is on, this is in the second position, meaning my first finger's behind the second fret. Here are the fingers that I'm using. Two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four. If we wanted to keep going with that, I would go one, three, four, two, four, one, two. You could also play three notes per string, and now I'm in the third position, but I'm going to shift. So in this case here, it would be frets. Three, five, seven, three, five, seven, four, five, seven, four, five, seven, five, seven, eight. We could, we could keep going there. Thoughts on David Gilmore's mindset. I love David Gilmore's playing. 
I listen to Pink Floyd a lot, and what I find with his playing is when he's up in when he's up front and center, like in regards to his playing, it's almost like it's the only thing that you can observe is his playing. And then when he's supporting the other instruments in the band, he sits back. And sometimes I'm like, now where's David? I've got I've got to listen to him. Oh, there's that guitar. And it's just so subtle in the background. You know, he's just doing little little uh, sharp attacks and stuff like that. He's a, a, an amazing player. I love his playing. That is, he's an example of a guy who's not thinking. He's not thinking, well, I wonder what position my pick should be in. I'm not, not knocking anybody for asking these questions, but I want you to understand, if you respect David Gilmore, he's not thinking about, well, I wonder about this scale, and I wonder about, should I do this, or shouldn't I do that, or how should I hold my pick, or what have you. He's free, man. He's just thinking free. He's just playing. And that's the way you should be, too. That's not a subjective subject. There's nothing that's going to be beneficial in your playing of stifling yourself and asking so many questions that it stifles you. You should be free in your playing. You're an artist. I want you to think like you're a child finger painting. When I watch my little guy finger paint, he's not like, well, I wonder if I can get it on this thumb. Well, should I, should it go up to this knuckle or should I, he's just like freaking going to town. That's how you want to think about music. You want to be free. Get as, and, and you can practice this, okay? Get as free as possible when you're playing. That's where you're going to get some amazing, amazing bits coming out, okay? Is there a secret to start and practice adding vibrato for beginners? Is there a secret? No. The secret's practice. And you add the vibrato where it sounds right to you. That is the only rule. You do it where it sounds right to you. Okay, John, thank you for the donation, brother. So kind. Kareem, thank you for the donation. Hello, Eric. I kind of came up with a song. I haven't learned any theory yet, but can you give me your opinion on the chords for my song? Yes, I will. John, thank you. That's super, uh, that's super kind and uh, really generous. And Kareem, super kind. Thank you very much. Is that Detroit Red Wings or is that REO Speedwagon? I think that's Detroit Red Wings, isn't it? Um... Very cool. So, so your chords are A minor seven, E minor, G minor seven, A sharp minor seven, B flat minor seven, which by the way, those are the same chord, right? So, can you give me your opinion on the chords for my song? Well, you tell me, everybody. Tell me. Now, I'm, I'm not going to give my opinion for a minute. Won't that be nice? Let's, let's not give my opinion for a minute. I'm going to play these chords. I don't know what the rhythm is or anything else. I don't know what order it is, but I'm going to do it in the order that you said here. Everybody, I want you to tell me what you think of these chords. It's good to get a good broad stroke of what everybody thinks, right? Because you you know, when I do these lessons, I want to reach as many people as possible. When you write a song, you want to reach as many people as possible. Typically, I mean, maybe you're just totally just writing something for yourself, but usually you create art to invoke other hearts as well, right? But let me play this, okay? So... I like it. It's got a little vibe to it. Tell me what you think of that, right? I'll finger pick it. me of something kind of Floydish, right? So I kind of like it too. Uh, I've seen a lot of people saying they like that. Yeah, I like it. It's not, you, you're definitely uh, playing kind of jazzy, somebody said, yeah. And it's uh, part of that is the way that I'm playing this, but also because you're using sevenths, you're throwing lots of sevenths in there, a lot of minor sevenths. In fact, they're all minor sevenths, right? 
Minor seven, minor, minor seven, minor seven. So you're throwing lots of minor sevens in there. When we throw a seventh in there, it makes it sound a little bit more jazzy, right? So look at Kareem, you're on to something. Everybody loves it. Very refreshing, right? Okay, and oh, you said A sharp minor seven or B flat minor seven, same thing, right? Okay, I got what you're saying. Yeah, so that's nice, and I don't know how you're playing it, but you know, if you were to solo over that, that chord's borrowed, that chord is borrowed. So for those two chords for a minute, you're kind of going into this other key. So you would have to, you'd have to represent that chord. If you're soloing, you'd have to represent that chord or play the notes that accentuate that chord, that complement that chord, uh, much like we would if we were borrowing chords, which you're doing here, okay? So yeah, very nice, good. Sometimes I drag my index fingernail when strumming. Have you dealt with this? Drag my index fingernail. No, I don't know, I'm not too sure what you're talking about there. Wow, Stephen Keller, $50 donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Eric and crew, God bless you all. Beautiful, man. Always coming through, Stephen. Beautiful. Wow. After learning the G major scale, how can you incorporate it into your practice and playing? Jez, if you know the G major scale, great question, by the way. If you know the G major scale, you know all the other scales too, right? Because you just have to move it up. So if you wanted to play A, you would scoot to that first note up to A. Now you're playing A major. If you wanted to play it in C, you scooch that first note up to C up to E, now you're playing in every key. So what you wanna do, uh, the quickest way to do this is to go on YouTube, or if you're in UGS, I've got all the jam tracks for you. I've got 600 plus jam tracks in there. But if, you don't, if you're not in UGS, or if you're on YouTube or something, you could search for G major jam track, G major jam track, and then you pull that up, and then you're playing the G major scale over the top of it, okay? If, um, and this would also work for any E minor jam track. So look for E minor jam track. Look for G major jam track and solo your G major over that. If you wanna move it to the other keys, then search C major jam track and scooch it up to C major or A minor jam track because every major key has a related minor key and every minor key has a related major key and it just means they share the same exact set of notes. Okay, for more information about that, search your guitar stage relative and you will know exactly what I'm talking about there, okay? All right, and so he said, I guess it would matter what the stage you're at uh, for playing, right? So like if I, let's say I, I do something like... Um, if I took that, that scale, okay, here's a, I want to play a little something in... In A major, right? Um, Sorry, right. gotta erase that. So, or this is an A major, so I'm going to take your G major scale. I'm going to move it up. G, G sharp, A. Now, I just the only thing I did is scooched it up two half steps or one whole step. Now, watch, listen.
issues and the, the scale, maybe, you know, different forms of it, but it doesn't matter. It's all the same notes. Does that make sense? Great. Um, oh, good, Jack. Love it. Oh, good. Glad you're liking that. That's kind of a little jazzy sounding, right? But that has more to do with the chord progression in the background. So now watch this. I'm going to take some... So that was A major, okay? Now, I'm going to play something in... I'm going to play the same exact key. So I told you that this would work, right? Every major key, you could play a minor scale over it, and every minor, every minor key, you could play a major scale over it, but it has to be the re related major minor key, okay? So if you're in a major key, if you want to find the related minor, you go down three half steps. If you're in a minor key, if you want to find the related major, you go up three, three half steps. You go up three half steps, okay? I have a video on that, okay? So now if I wanted to do, let's say I wanted to do something like a... That's the related minor. This was A, this was F sharp. I went down three half steps. It's real easy. So, at least to find the key, right? But now my tonal center is a little bit different. Okay, make sense? If not, I can explain it further. In two minutes, we're going to go into the advanced lesson. Seems like that was super short, but probably because of our technical difficulties. Uh, okay. There we go. Three minutes to modes. Yes, two minutes to modes. Here we go. What steps do I take to find the key of a song? The chords in a song are D minor 7, C, G minor 7, A minor. Getting some different answers from my fellow chatters. Okay, so let's think about this. If we were in the key of C, we'd have a D minor 7. We'd have an A minor 7. The G minor 7 we wouldn't have. But, let's see, G minor, A minor 7, so we, that, that's our 2 and our 3. And a D minor there. Okay, so what it, is, what it sounds like you're doing here is it sounds like you're in the key of... Um, You're definitely borrowing a chord in there, so that's probably why you're getting the different answers. Because it's a, you know, unless I'm not seeing it, which there's a chance of that, uh, that you, you're you're borrow, you're kind of dabbling your foot into a couple different keys there, so you're borrowing a chord. Okay, so somebody said your F. Okay, so let's let's test that. Let's test that theory. Could be right. Let's test it. Uh, which that was the other thing that I thought was F. Uh, I don't play in that key very often, but since he never plays the F, it's hard to say that you're an F. Does that make sense? If you, it'd be like us, me doing a speech on guitars, but I never talk about guitars. It'd be really difficult for us to say this is about guitars. So if you never play the tonal center, is it really that key? 
Not really. No, it's not. For the same reason is I was just playing an A minor, at the beginning of the program I was playing A minor 7, and so that I could say, well, okay, I'm playing, that's my tonal center, my A is my tonal center, but really I'm playing in the key of G. This is going over some of your heads. But since I never played the G, we can't say I'm playing in G. I just had a tonal center of A. So it can't be an F because there's no F playing. But yes, the chords would line up with what you're saying there, which is why I defaulted to F in my brain. But no, he's not playing an F. Let's test the theory. F major, we'd have a, a G minor 7. We'd have an A minor 7. We'd have the, you know, the B flat major. We'd have the C major we'd have a D minor seven. So yes, technically we would be playing an F, but he never plays an F. So we don't really have that tonal center. So, so it's gonna be, one of those other chords is going to be your tonal center and it's gonna, you know, if you call the F your tonal center, you're, you're not ever going there. So you're not establishing it. Does that make sense? And somebody's saying D minor, Okay, but in the key of D minor, let's talk about this. D minor, okay, so let's go with this for a minute. Let's say it's starting on D minor, which doesn't necessarily mean it's in that key, but it's, it's a clue. But let's go with this. D minor is also the key of F, so it can't be, you know, we could, we could be playing in D minor. Let's, let's go back to this for a minute here. Hold on. And the first chord was a D minor, but hold on here. There was some chord in there that I thought... Yeah, yes. D minor, probably closer to D minor than anything else. But let me see what the chords were again. That's really interesting. And I love, I love to have to discover stuff like this on the fly. It's good, it's great work and it makes your brain work. And uh, so let's, let's, um, Yes, definitively. Definitively, we're in D minor. Now I am changing my mind. Yes, thank you. The students surpass the teacher. Beautiful. Now watch, now, now what I would do is I would test this, right? I would go like this, watch. I'd say, so we had D minor seven, C major, G minor seven, A minor seven. We'll test this theory, but I can hear it already. We're in D minor. I don't know if I'm playing it the way you did it, but that's beautiful. I love that chord progression. It's really nice. D minor, okay? You guys win. All right, here we go, friends. Let's get into the advanced section of the program here since we're four minutes in already. For those of you that are just joining us, it's the intermediate to advanced section, day 22, 30-day guitar challenge. Takes 21 to 30 days to develop a habit, that's why I'm with you every single day during the month of April for two hours from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The first hour is a beginner lesson, the second hour is an advanced lesson. Here's our syllabus, link one down below will give you access to the syllabus plus other free things that are in that, that are in that uh, PDF, including some other great resources from other great folks that are teaching other things like meditation and stuff like that. Uh, so check that out. That's link one. Link two below is going to give you access to the Unstoppable Guitar System. If you want to get into pro, we would love to have you in there. Tons of folks are joining this month. Uh, but if you just want to take advantage of the free program, I've got a free program for you, and that's what we're doing every 
first hour of these broadcasts is I'm going over that, walking you through those 30 days, because it's 30 or something lessons, 30 or so lessons that I'm walking you through. Second link below, UGS Standard is free for you guys today, okay? If you would, friends, before we get into the lesson, please like this video if you have not already. Share this out into the interwebs. Let's try to get over 700 today. I think we can do it. I feel strong about it. Do you? 700. All right, so 700, here we go. So go ahead and share this, go ahead and like it, and subscribe if you like this, what we're doing here, okay? All right, here we go. The second part of the equation here today is modes. And I mentioned to you that if you know the major scale, which you, listen to me, if you're not in UGS standard already, I'm gonna reach through the phone, I'm gonna slap you, right? Because if, if you've been watching me all this time and you're like, I'm not gonna do it, I don't need it. I'm gonna skip around and be a uh, fool on YouTube. I'm just gonna keep skipping around to YouTubes and, and wonder why I'm not learning the guitar. That's what I'm gonna do. Seems like a good method. I'll just keep jumping around and we'll wonder why it is that I don't have the talent to play guitar. It's not talent. Freaky deaky, it's that you're not going through the, the, the videos in order that I'm giving you for free. So go through that. And if you had gone through it already, you would know the major scale. And if you know the major scale, you know one major scale, it's so easy. A baby can do it. My kid knows how to play the major scale, by the way. Okay? And he's exceptionally smart. But so are you. Okay? So once you know the major scale, you know it in all 12 keys, and you know all the seven modes. So seven times 12 equals 84 modes that you know already. You just don't know them by name. So we're gonna learn them by name today, okay? Ready? You ready to have your mind blown? Oh, I'm so pissed. I'm so, I'm, I'm so excited that I'm pissed. You know me, I get mad when, uh, when, when, when I get excited. So here we go, watch this. Okay, this is how it goes. Two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now we have whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay. Ah, that does not look good. I got to do this over again. Right? You've heard do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. You've heard that, right? Sure, you have. So now, because of that, how can I write this out? Let's do this. One, one's gonna go here. We're gonna have a two. Remember we said the one chord's major, the two chord's minor, three chord is minor, the four chord is major, the five chord is major, the six chord is minor, and the seven chord is diminished. Now, looks like this. You don't have to take a picture of this yet because we're, get, we're gonna add a lot more information here. So don't take a screenshot yet, okay? We're gonna add a lot more here. Okay, so if we, let's do this. In between each one of these notes, we know that between one and two, there's a whole step. Between two and three, there's a whole step. Between three and four, there's a half step. Between four and five, whole step. Five and six, whole step. Six and seven, whole step. And seven and eight, half step, okay? So let's, let's agree on this. As we're going along, I wanna see thumbs up and all that good stuff so that you guys would let me know. By the way, we're up to 647, folks. I can feel 700 coming on strong. Okay, so look. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, do. It's the same thing, right? Minor scale is when you're starting on six, Michael. If you start from six and sing to six, that's the minor scale, okay? So let me know that you guys are getting this as we're going along, okay? Okay. Whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. You can literally do this. A half step is one fret, whole step is two frets. Get it? Got it? Good. Okay, so you can literally take any note, start on any note off of any string, and do whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. If you don't know this already, dear God, friend, dear God, the link is in my the description of my videos. You've heard me say that before, right? 
Uh, it is, it's in the description of this video. Link two. You gotta know the construction of the major scale. I can't emphasize this enough to you. If you don't know it, you are really making life hard for yourself on guitar, okay? At least understanding why it is that we do what we do. Okay, that being said, watch this. If you know this one formula, right, you can start it on any place on the guitar. If I wanna start it on the G, I don't even have to know that that's a G. It's a, it's a B, whatever. It's a, it's a this note. I don't know what that is. I don't know what note that is. So now, I do, but I'm just saying, it doesn't matter. I can still play the scale of whatever this is. Here's my, here's my note, and then I go whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half, right? I don't have to know what this note is. I know I'm playing in that key. And I can play it in this key. I don't even have to know the name of the key and I can still play the scale in it. So can you. Because it's just a, a simple formula, okay? This is how to learn everything instead of memorizing out of a, out of a daggone grimoire, a scale or chords grimoire, right? It's a reference. How many times do you get down your dictionary? right? Never. It's not like you're studying the dictionary. You could. That'd be weird. Okay, so major scale. We're going to call this the Ionian mode, okay? Because that's its name. If we play the major scale, it's also known as the major scale. If you play any note and then you have this pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, off of any note, you will get that related major scale, or you will get the major scale starting on whatever the note that is. If you start on the G, you will get a G major scale. If you start on the G, you will get the Ionian mode. The Ionian mode is equal to the major scale. They're equal. It's, it's just another name for it. That's it, right? Well, now I'm confused. Are you really? Because someone could call you by your first name or last name. You'll answer to both, right? It's got two names. It's not that big of a deal. Don't, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Okay? Now, if we were to play the same mode, the same scale, but we were to play it from the two, it's called the Dorian mode. Okay, Dorian mode. The one, let's say if this was playing from, from the key of G, right? If we were playing from, from G, then this would be G Ionian. G Ionian, okay? If we played... The two, the second scale step is A, then we would play, be playing A Dorian. We're not playing G Dorian. So all of these are the same notes. We're just playing them from the, the two to the two, or the three to the three, or the four to the four, to the five to the five, the six to six to the seven to the seven. That's it. Now, what we're, what's playing in the background is going to determine whether it's an actual mode or if we're just playing in the major scale. I'm going to have to explain that in a minute, but just track with me here in a minute, okay? First, we just want to understand all the different forms. If you were like me when I was a kid, what I did is I said, oh, I need to learn all the jazz modes because that's how to sound good on guitar. It's not, by the way. But I thought just like you did, right? And so here I would go, okay. G, G, uh, uh, Ionian. A, Dorian. B, Phrygian. C, Lydian. D, Mixolydian. A, Aeolian. F sharp, Locrian. And then back to my major scale. Now, realistically, I only play G major scale there. But Eric, I'm confused. You just said all the modes. Yes, I did, but I didn't change notes. It was still G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. So if I have a G major chord progression happening the whole time, then it's not going to sound like anything but G major. I'm just playing different parts of the neck. Your ear doesn't think anything differently about this. So if I'm playing a different form of the scale, I'm just playing a different place on the neck. That's all I'm doing. I'm not playing any different notes, okay? So that's really important because this is where people get confused about modes, okay? And I know the light bulbs are going to be coming on for you in a moment in a minute here in just a minute. When the light bulb starts going on, friends, please put a little light bulb 
or, or a thumbs up or something so that I can see that I'm talking about the right thing because this is real time. By the way, 694, I told you we're getting to 700. Come on with me, collective consciousness, 700. Come on, 700, 700, all right? Come on, we're getting to 700 here. So what I want you to do is when it makes sense to you, give me a thumbs up so because I want to see that light turning on and this is going to help me to do this, okay? It's going to help me to know where you're at because I'm looking at the screen here and I can actually see all that, okay? So, makes sense? You're playing all these different forms, but it's the same scale. Watch, G major. forms parts of the neck same notes nothing's different happening but stay tuned because I'm going to show you how we will make that actually sound like a mode but what we're doing right now is we're just forming the the, the forms okay we're we're forming the the formation so that you can use these later on to play modally okay okay so if we play the scale from the one to the one we get Ionian if we play from the two to the two we get Dorian. If we play, which by the way is a minor sound, minor sounding scale because it has the flat third in it. That's why it's red. And the chord is also minor. Not a coincidence. Okay, third, the third scale, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Phrygian, looks like that. Okay, Phrygian. To G. Dear Lord, I've got the handwriting of a small child. That's probably some, there's probably some sort of psychological reason for that. I, I'm sure there is. Hopefully I'm spelling that right, Phrygian. Okay, uh, okay. Number, number four is going to be Lydian. Lydian which is a major sounding scale, by the way, or mode. Five is Mixolydian. Mixolydian. By the way, all these Greek modes have their name because of the, the mood that it invoked. Mood. That's what mode means. It means mood. Whoa, really? Yeah, really. 693, folks. We're seven away from 700. I can feel it strong. Can you feel it? Put 700 in that chat if you think we're going to hit it, because I do. Number six is Aeolian. Okay, Aeolian. It's also a minor, a minor sounding scale. Not only is it a minor sounding scale, it's the minor scale. What? But I thought you said it's the Aeolian mode. It is, but it's also the minor scale. 696, here we go. 700, here we come. Here we come. Aeolian is a minor sounding scale. Boom, we just got 700 because of you. Look at that. Freaks of nature with your mind power. I love that. So Aeolian, it sounds like a minor scale because it, it is a minor sounding scale, but it's also the minor scale. Aeolian mode. It's just another name for it. And the last one is Locrian. Okay, it's played off of the seventh scale step. And, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you, even for you beginners here, how this, how you can use this, okay? So don't freak out. You don't have to memorize this or just have all this stuff like, ah, oh, you're freaking me out with all those names. I'm giving you lots of stuff that may freak you out a little bit, but just don't get freaked out over the nomenclature. Don't get freaked out over the words and stuff like that. They're just labels, that's all they are. We could name them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would be a lot less intimidating, okay? Don't worry about the names. Locrian is a diminished sound. Oh, well, I'm not even gonna write that. It's a diminished sound, okay? Because it has a flat three and a flat five. So when we say that a scale sounds minor, it's because it has a minor third in it. If it sounds major, it's because it has a major third in it. If it sounds diminished, it has a minor third and a minor five in it, just like the chord, cool? Partha, thank you so much for the donation. Super kind, my friend. Okay, now, now, now go ahead and take a picture, okay? Go ahead and take a picture of this. Wait, are you ready? Okay, so there you go. Now you have that, right? Now, what can you do with this? 
here's the deal, right? Before, I had this chord progression and it went something like, well, I'm gonna, it doesn't matter what it went like, because I'm gonna do a different chord progression here now, okay? Now watch this. Now I could play G. I could play Ionian over this, over the top of it. I could play A Dorian over it. sound isn't changing at all. Why? The sound's not changing because I'm not changing the scale at all. The only thing that I'm changing is the form. Tell me if the light just went on right there. Please tell me. I gotta know. Because this because this is the thing for me is that I was like, well, I know all these modes, but I don't hear it sounding any different. Well, it's not because the background isn't different. But, because my tonal center is a G. Thank you. Good. Light bulb's coming on. Okay. So, my tonal center is this. It doesn't matter what form I'm using. It's the same notes, same notes, same notes, same notes, same notes. It doesn't matter. But what does matter is if I were to change the chord progression. Now, the chord progression is going to dictate what the tonal center is. So if I did something like what I did earlier, right? If I went... Let's see... Uh, This one will work. Um... sounding more jazzy, right? It was sounding a little bit, oh good, thank you so much, the lights are shining and the pennies are dropping, good, all right, I'm looking, lots of light bulb moments, people are getting this, okay, beautiful. So it's the order that's changing. It is the order that's changing. So if you wanted to know how to play the Ionian mode or the major scale on anything, it'd be whole step, whole step, half, whole, 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 half. If you wanted to know what the Dorian scale was in anything, you would start you would play whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole. If you wanted to know how to play the Mixolydian scale, you'd go whole, whole, half. Wait a minute, that's just how the major scale started. It is. It's very close to the major scale. Watch. Whole, whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole. <laughs> so these two are switched around, right? Remember, the major scale goes whole, whole, half, whole, whole, 
whole half. So it flips. That's why a lot of folks will play the mixolydian mode instead of the major scale, especially like in jazz and stuff, and they're using uh, that flat seven chord because it works really well with that. Okay, I say flat seven chord, not a flat seven chord, a dominant seventh chord. So now I know I'm going over some of your heads here, but that's about as far as we're going to go today because if we go any further than that, we're really getting into we're really digging in deep, and I don't want to lose you guys, okay? Yeah, people use Mixolydian and uh, in blues all the time. Okay, so there, you get the basic idea there, right? The ones that sound really good, I mean, Ionian is real stable. It's major, obviously, Aeolian, number six, that sounds real stable. Dorian's not so bad either. Mixolydian's not so bad. They're only one note away from the original, right, from the major and the minor. The closer you are to major and minor in regards to the scale not changing, so if you take the minor scale and you change one note, like Dorian, you raise the six. If you take the Dor if you take the minor scale, remember two tonal centers, major and minor, for the most part. 99.999999% of everything you listen to is major and minor. So that's really strong in your ears. But if we play another mode, something that goes outside of our very strong tonal centers, we need it needs to be as close to these things as possible for us for our ear to be like, yeah, sure, that's in there, that's in the ballpark, I get that. And so if you play in Dorian, that's only one note away from Aeolian slash minor, it's, it has a raised sixth. And if we were to play Mixolydian, it's only one note away from the major scale, it has a flattened seven. So those would be two examples of, uh, if you wanted to play around with modes, why don't you play around with a tonal center of two, right? And, and just mess with the Dorian mode. If you really wanted to mess around with modes, start with Mixolydian, and then you'll have four of the modes down already. There's only three other ones. But the other ones start getting into some, in, into we're talking two, three uh, notes that are off, two, three, four notes that are, that are gonna be off of the major scale. And so now we're talking three, four notes that your ear needs to get used to. It's gonna be all discombobulated, okay? Make sense? I told you yesterday, we're always looking for symmetry in music. We're always looking for symmetry, and because of that, uh, if, it, if we don't have symmetry, our ear is searching for symmetry, right? If I start tapping like this, right? This is our beat. And I do this, if I go. It, it, it's gonna drive you a little bit nuts, right? There's, it's not coherent, right? We want coherence. We want flow. We want uh, definition. We want patterns. We want, this is, a, this is music. What's what art's all about. Make sense? Okay, good, good, good. All right, good. I'm so glad that you guys are getting this. That makes me so happy because modes, honestly, are probably the most misunderstood most mistaught subject that there is. And I'm not saying that I'm a pro at it. I just know it the way that I understand it and I'm teaching it to you in that way, okay? I've seen great players on stage play jazz and I say, how are you thinking about the modes and what have you? And, he'll, and, and I've had people say, I'm not thinking about modes at all. I don't know any modes, I don't know any scales. But they're just outlining the chord, which is another secret for you. A lot of times, the chord that jazz players are playing over, the, the scale is going to match that chord, and that's why they are playing that particular mode, okay? Ah, uh, beautiful. Adrian, thank you so much for the donation, friend. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. Questions. Does the structure follow the same rule when in different modes? Does the chord structure follow the same rule in different modes? So it would work like this. If you wanted to do something in the Dorian mode, then yes, the, the chords would match. So, you know, your two would be minor. But don't think about it. Don't make this the one. That You're really going to foul yourself up. Just make this the two and know that the two is always minor and the three is always minor, like 99.9% .9 of the time, okay? and then just make your chord progression. So what I did is I did a, a, a minor two and I did a major five. That was the chord progression that I just used. But I just made my tonal center a two. Since I never brought the one in, like our, like our buddy earlier who said, oh, was in the key of F, 
understandable because F and D minor share the same sets of notes and same sets of chords. It's a really easy thing to say. Uh, but since they never played the F, there's no way for us to really, we're not hearing an F. So it'd be like writing a song about love and the whole time you're not talking anything about love. They never say anything in that song about love or watching a movie watching Bridesmaids, and they don't mention Bridesmaids once. You'd walk out of there going, why did they, that was a great movie, but why did they call it Bridesmaids? That's weird. So you gotta have that, at least that note representative, that's your tonal center, right? So the chords would be minor, it would be major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished, which is why I have the colors the way they are. The three reds are gonna be minor chords, and the three greens are the major chord, and that's gonna be your diminished chord. This doesn't make sense to you. It only means you didn't understand the major scale, which you should have studied in UGS standard that I'm giving you today for free, the second link below, okay? All right, let's get to some questions. One question I have that's been bugging me since I started playing guitar, how the heck the minor pentatonic fits into 12-bar blues progression, but we know that most blues progressions are in a major key. John Dino, thank you so much for asking that question. I love it. I had this question, the same question, for John Pell, who uh, has taught Dan Huff and a lot of uh, amazing players in the Nashville area. Uh, he's a mentor of mine, an amazing dude. He taught, he still teaches at Belmont. He's, he's a dean there. And he's an amazing guitar instructor and an amazing dude used to live across the hall from my girlfriend, so I talked with him. That's how I got to know him. Amazing dude. And I sat down with him one time for a guitar lesson, and I said, I said, John, I said, why is it that in blues, we're playing a one, a four, and a five, and they're all major chords, just like this, one, four, five, but we're playing a daggone minor scale over the top of it, a minor pentatonic scale. What I mean by minor scale is it has that minor third in there, right? Because if this is our chord, that note technically shouldn't work. It should be this note. It shouldn't be. You hear it's wrong? It doesn't sound right. But it sounds good in blues. Also, we bend that note a lot. So we're kind of pushing it into that major sound. So there's that reason, okay? So it creates tension. And remember, music is all about tension and release. Without the tension, the release isn't gonna sound good. Think about a good Disney movie. You're watching, I'm like, ah, oh, the bad guy's gonna win. Oh no, he's not gonna win. Oh yay, it's gonna be a happy ending. Oh my God, near the end of the movie, here comes, here comes Gaston. He don't kill the beast. No, the beast has to fall in love with the with the bell with bell. Don't do this. No. Oh my God, he killed the beast. I mean, we're watching him. The beast died. He died. He did die. Let's be honest. He died, right? And then all of a sudden, here comes the rain and what have you. And then he lifts up in the air, and it's a big happy ending. Now, the reason that you love that ending so much, and every just about every Hollywood ending is because they do that thing to you right before that ending. Now that I've told you this, it's not gonna spoil it, but you're gonna be watching for it all the time, and it's gonna be true all the time. They even do it on the real movies of like, uh, like we were watching penguins the other day, and they show, they show these penguins being eaten by these seals. We're watching this with my kid, and I'm like, dear God. But the ones that, that had names, that they named and then we were following through the movie, those guys made it. So it's like they create all this tension. You're like, oh no, he's, the, the, Billy the Penguin's gonna get eaten, but he doesn't get eaten. So they, they, they drop you down so that they can lift you up again. A good dubstep song will really drag out that drop. They'll drag it out and drag it out. So you're like, dear God, come on, I wanna dance. And uh, same thing true with really good music is there's gotta be that tension, there's gotta be that release. The bigger the tension, the better the release is gonna be. Uh, real simple, children's music doesn't have much tension, so it doesn't get much release. So it's very simple, it's very easy to listen to, it's very elementary, like very simple food that you eat, okay? So we gotta have that tension, we gotta have that release, and when it comes to blues, us playing that minor, that minor pentatonic over top of a major scale is, is awesome, because it creates all that cool, um, that cool, oh, hooch died. 
Hooch, does Hooch die in the movie? That's terrible. No, really? But it probably ends on a happy note still, right? I'm not going to watch that movie then, you know? Um, so there's got to be that tension and release, and that's why we, we can play that. So technically, you're right, John Dino. It shouldn't work. It shouldn't. But there's a lot of things in music that shouldn't work, but they do. So at the end of the day, um, you are free to do anything that you want, okay? Radiohead and these these groups that push the edges, uh, Pink Floyd and what have you, it's like they push the boundaries of what is possible, and that's great in art. We need that. We need people to push the boundaries so that we can expand more room and create more room for creativity instead of just be like, it has to be like this. Poor Bach, back in his day, if he would throw in a ninth or a diminished chord, they literally would say, you get out of the church because that is not, that is insulting God and demons are present when you do that. So they thought that literally, if you played a diminished chord, that that was the devil because that was uncomfortable, which is not too unlike today where if something falls outside of someone's paradigm, they freak out. They freak the frick out. That's why they need Joe Dispenza and they need to do some meditation and expand their consciousness a bit. Um, so Hooch died in the end. That's, I, I see, I, I don't like to watch Disney movies because especially some of the real ones because they, they I don't want to see the dog die. Hooch, Hooch was a dog, right? Old Yeller. That was before the day they realized that these happy endings are going to make people happier than, than the daggone sad endings. But you can't do the same predictable thing every time, right? So you got to, you got to, you got to um, change it up a little. Bruce Willis dies in the end of Armageddon. We're going to keep going with this? He dies in the end of Armageddon? Oh, no. Well, great. Thanks for the spoiler alert, Rob. Uh, okay. What is the best way to learn the minor scale, or do we even need to learn it like we learn the major scale? Authentically, MG. You can learn it by the way that I just told you. Or, you know, if you're in the Unstoppable Guitar System, I give you all these forms so that you can learn it yet another way. So I teach it from all these different views, right? Uh, so that's the best way to do it. Uh, but if you don't have that, then you can always just go with this formula here and just start on the six. Play from six to six. Now you're playing your minor scale. Now I told you that at the end of this, you would know every major scale and every mode. If you know the major scale, you can play that in any key. That means you can play all these other ones in any key too. So if you play... Your major scale from the two to the two, now you can move it in any one of the keys. So today, friends, you just learned seven modes times the 12 different keys. You just learned 84 modes. Bam! See? You are amazing. <laughs> MSG Knight was just, he was halfway through the middle of Armageddon, and you just messed it up for him. Al Howard said, everybody dies at the end. Or is it the beginning? Al, I'm with you. It's the beginning. It is the beginning, my friend. E.T. survived. He did, but he went away, right? Which I was sure that there was going to be an E.T. part two, but there wasn't. So if you're playing in G major and you switch to Dorian, do you play in A major or the second form of G major? Okay, so... When you're playing in G major and you switch to Dorian, if you're switching to Dorian, if you're switching to G Dorian, now you're talking about changing the structure. But G Dorian's not going to work very well over a major chord progression, okay? Number one. If you're, oh, I missed some donations. Okay, I'll get back to them. I'll get back to them here, okay? Boom, boom, boom. I'll get back to them. So, if you're playing in... G major, uh, if you moved up to the second position, you started playing G major there, you're not changing the key. Make sense? You're just playing G major still. Okay, did I miss a donation? I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Babs, thank you, Babs. I'm so sorry I missed you. Thank you for your work today. So kind. And Dana, thank you. So kind. I'm so sorry that I missed it. Oh, and she had an uh, exploding head and a light bulb in folding hands. Beautiful. So her mind was blown. Light bulb went on, and she's thankful for it. Beautiful. Thank you, Dana. So kind. Did I miss others? 
Hopefully not. I'm going up. I'm going up. And there's Adrian. And then I just saw another one just came in. Tom, beautiful. Thank you so much, Tom. Super kind. Okay. <laughs> Does every mode have a related other? No. I mean, technically, but no, it's not going to serve you to say yes. So, you know, you could say that, that the Dorian's related major is Mixolydian, but it's not going to help you any. That's just making things really complicated. It's, you're not going to get anything out of that. But I get where you're going, you know. A Dorian is G major. My knees hurt gets it. Good, yes. Look at these, you guys are lit. Phoenix rises from the ashes of its own destruction. It's true. The pictures bought a Telecaster and is in love with it, beautiful. Hard to teach and keep up with donations, it's true. Okay, mm, you guys are lit, I love it. I'm around good people here. Modes, maybe it's easier to explain. Say that you are to emphasize the X note, refer to the mode name. I don't know what you mean by that, Roy, but um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, but I'm sure the seven different ways that I explained it, you, I, we probably tapped on it there, yeah. Oh, beautiful, thank you, Rob. Love it, crappy day saved by the last almost two hours. Beautiful, good. Wouldn't be hard to improvise in Lydian over major scales because of the flat five. So the Lydian, uh, I don't think the Lydian has a flat five. Let me, let me look here. Let me think here. Lydian. No, Lydian has a regular five in it. No, it does. Yeah, it has a, it has a regular five in it. This is Lydian. It has a raised four. It has a sharp four, as Frank just said. Here's regular, here's Lydian. So, it had the, so the five's in the same place. The only one that has that flat five is the Locrian, if I recall correctly, pretty sure, yes. Oh. Yeah, are we good for Melissa joining to help with songwriting on Friday? Gregory, I'm so glad you asked that. Yes, I will make sure that she is here. Friday, we're doing Finding Your Why. We're really leading up to some stuff here, friends. Finding Your Why is so important. That's what we're going to be talking about on Friday. And songwriting is going to be the second part of the hour. And we'll have my wife here who is, you know, she's the one who has all these uh, trophies and, you know, all this stuff back here. This is all stuff that, that, that she's written. Uh, for Carrie Underwood and Reba McIntyre and um, uh, who's that? David Nail, Pin Monkey. Uh, who else does she have back there? Phil Stacy, Leanne Rhymes, Maya Sharp, um, David Nail. We got him. Uh, Garth Brooks. A couple of songs for Garth. Marty Raybon. Uh, she's written for the Bears movie. She's written for uh, Tyler Farr, Guy Walks Into a Bar. So she is a little spitfire, man. She knows what she's doing as far as songwriting and cooking and like just about everything else. She's amazing. So yeah. So she'll be with us on Friday. Hopefully I can get her on here. You're, not, you're saying, what gear am I using right now? Right now I'm using my Kemper amp and I got the, the Kemper speaker cabinet, the, the, the Kemper cone, they call it. I just got that on vacation here uh, during our little quarantine time. And then I'm using the, the 65 strap today. And that's it. That's all I'm running through, which is plenty. That's all I need. Uh, Esther, I'm so proud of my wife. I, I, she's, she is so, I'm so proud of her. I'm telling her all the time about how amazing she is. What Garth songs did she write? She wrote Cold Like That, and does he have one called Midnight Train? I think she wrote one called Midnight Train.
Okay, are you doing any live sessions on what to practice and how to practice? Intermediate guitarists stuck. YouTube overload with too much information. Estimator. Yeah, so that's the problem with the world today. I was thinking about this last night. I'll try not to, to get off the rails here, but I was thinking that the reason that, that folks are really losing faith, everybody's losing faith in the media now, in right in mainstream tv and news and if you are not if you're still like believing mainstream new media and that sort of thing you are definitely behind the curve because most people do not believe everything that they're saying anymore there are agendas and what have you we know that it's owned by six by six companies and they control this stuff there are youtubers that are doing that are way more popular than major news networks so people aren't listening anymore they're just not that being said, I'm leading somewhere with this, it's because back in the day, we didn't have a lot of information, right? And so we listened to one person and that was good and everything else, not really, but it's better than listening to one person today. Now we have lots of people, right, to listen to. And YouTube has so many channels and there's so much truth. People are waking up all over the place. This quarantine time, friends, is gonna turn out to be a very, very, very good thing when it comes to our minds and everything else because everybody I follow, everybody who I, who I respect and what have you, they're, they're lit, they are talking about the truth. And I can see the media that we know it, the CNNs and the Foxes and, the, and, the, uh, uh, and all, the, all, all the rest of it, MS, MSNBC and all the other liars, they're crumbling, they're falling apart because there's so much misinformation out there. And what you're running into, my friend, with the guitar is you're running into misinformation or you're running into, um, you know, you're running into one guy says something real definitively and then the next guy says, no, that's wrong. So there's, there's all this sort of thing going on. So when you're not following something step by step, it's gonna, it's gonna be frustrating for you. That's why I create the courses in the way that I do, okay? So, um, you get it? All right. So, and so as far as practice, yes, I will guide you as we're getting into that. In fact, perfecting your practice is going to be, how to practice is on the 25th. So this Saturday, so the day after our songwriting, we're going to talk about how to practice. We're going to talk about scalar practice as our advanced bit there. That'll be super fun to take all this stuff that we did. Oh, man, I'm going to show you how to do all sorts of really cool stuff. Like, for instance, taking, taking your scales and playing them in different ways like this. You know, or... That sort of thing. That will help you to really ingrain these scales in your brain. Also give you ways to do runs, to play all sorts of really cool stuff, you know? Okay? Uh, and we will talk about practice, how to practice, right? I'm agreeing with you. No politics. Down with the politics. Let's get rid of them, right? Let's get rid of them all. <laughs> oh, Pitaka, you did not just say that, did you? Oh, dear Lord. Dear Lord. Okay. Um, you would never convince me of that, hon. Do you stretch to warm up before playing? I don't. I just jump right in and I start playing. I just jump in and start playing right away. That's me. Warming up may be good for you. Uh, I have a short amount of time to do stuff. So for me, I like to get right into it right away and not mess around with, with, uh, some, you know, with, with warming up. Some people will, though. All right. Is it necessary to stretch the strings before installing in an acoustic? Is it necessary to stretch the strings before installing in an acoustic? Uh, is, well, yes, you want to always stretch your strings. Follow the protocol that I teach you guys in regards to this online. Search your guitar stage changing strings and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Uh, because it's really important to, that you want to pull the slack out of that string, otherwise your guitar is gonna go out of tune, go out of tune, go out of tune for, for several days after you install your strings, faux show, okay? Friends, if you have not already, like this video, share it with a friend and subscribe if you like what it is that we're doing. Couldn't find the strumming diagrams in the first three lessons. 
lessons. Where, where, please, uh, Jeff. They're in. They're under the strumming video. Go to the strumming video. Click on the PDF that's right there with that. That's where it's at. Any advice for cramps, Alfredo? You probably will get cramps in the beginning when you are pl if you're playing a lot. Then you probably will get cramps because you're using muscles that aren't conditioned yet. So you're conditioning them. You could like eat bananas, bananas, or get get some sort of potassium supplement that helps with cramping. But you're also using you know there's a physical thing that's happening where you're using muscles that aren't used all the time. So they they need to be conditioned. So that's going to happen. Good for you for playing until you're cramping up. That's great. Just back up a little bit and you'll feel a little bit better about it. Okay. Uh, beautiful Wayne. Thank you, Eric. You get more energized every day. Don't know how you keep it going, but I am grateful. Thank you, Wayne. That's so kind. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it took me a long time to understand it, but that meditation is dynamite. And I did a meditation last night. I was out in space, man. And I got so re-energized. I could literally, I could literally feel my brain rewiring stuff last night. I woke up and I was seeing colors and, and, and it was nuts. And he had a mega meditation last night. Get into that meditation. Follow my follow my my Twitter. I'm dropping links from Joe Dispenza. This guy is blowing my mind. Because I've meditated for years. I was telling my mom about this. I've meditated for years, but I didn't understand why. Why are we sitting up? Why are we closing our eyes? Why are we and so I'm asking these questions all the time, which is exactly the kind of stuff that kind of gets you out of your meditation. So now that I understand why it is, now I can close my eyes, I can shut down and go into this other vibrational level. Um, LSD helps with color too, Al's saying. I'm sure it does, yeah. Um, but man, if you're not into this, do some research, follow stuff that I'm talking about. I've got, I've got in the PDF, the very first link that's below, I actually have a link to uh, Sadhguru, who's this Indian guy. I've been following him for years. Super brainiac dude. Uh, and he also teaches like meditation and that sort of thing. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. And it's free. It's a free course that I'm give, that, that, that's in that PDF that he gives you. So check that out if you're interested in it at all. Okay. Oh yeah. Thank you, Gregory. That guy link still works for a couple of days according to their site. So I've been posting these links to a program that I've paid for, but Gaia allows me to post them online and you can watch it for 24 hours. Gregory's saying that link is still alive. Yeah, I noticed that. I clicked on it yesterday and it said 48 hours. So who knew? Uh, there you go. That's great. Get into it. So you can probably still get into it right now. Okay. Do it. Do it. Do it. Change your life, man. Change your life. Tom, thank you so much. Another great show. Beautiful. Thank you, buddy. Dispenza. Rick, you spelled it right. Dispenza, D-I-S-P-E-N-Z-A, Joe Dispenza. The guy is off the chart brilliant. And he is so he's he's passionate for changing, rewiring your brain. Addict, unhappy, depression, got a disease. This guy literally explains all that stuff, how you can reset your genes how you can, because uh, we're 95% subconscious and 99, this is, uh, sorry, this is just coming from a scientist, not a guitar teacher. 99% of disease comes not from hereditary, from, from, from our genes, does not. It comes from lifestyle and we're a way of thinking. And he explains how to redo this. It's not something that you're gonna get on a bumper sticker. It's something that you have to, duh, you have to invest in it. You gotta go down that rabbit hole, you gotta do the work. But it's totally available for you if you wanna change your life. He talks about re, you know, reprogramming yourself, but listen, you're not gonna reprogram yourself by watching the same TV shows and doing the same stuff all the time, right? You're not gonna get better at guitar by playing the same dumb riff all the time. You're gonna get good at that riff and you're gonna build a groove just on that one riff. If you wanna get good at anything, you have to get outside of your comfort zone, you have to get, you have to do things you haven't done before. Um, you know, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And I think it was Einstein that said, you never get, you're never gonna get new answers. You're never gonna get information doing the same stuff, right? You've gotta do different stuff. You gotta get outside of your paradigm. If you don't, it's where you will stay forever until you die. It's just true. I didn't make this up. These are laws of the universe, okay? And this totally applies to guitar, so if I'm freaking you out, you better accept it because it applies to guitar 100%. It applies to everything.
it'd be like me not talking about time when it comes to music, right? It's, it's important. You got to know it. You got to do it, okay? Oh, thank you, Jason. How to uh, quickly view our, our, UG, our YGS merch. Uh, tap the X on the chat and view the merch underneath the like button. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, Jason, for, for doing that. Okay. All right, beautiful. Let's keep going, man. I want to get your questions answered. I know you guys... I know you guys are stuck on some things. I am too. Everybody is. We are on a continuum. We start at any one thing over here at zero, and then we can keep going an infinite amount in this direction. But you always have to start at zero. So if it's your first day at guitar, you're going to suck like every player on the first day of their guitar. It's just the way it is. If it's your first day of meditation, you will suck just like everybody on their first day. It's okay. That's where we all start. I don't know if anybody who started as a senior in college. We all start at kindergarten. Maybe one of us gets to skip a grade or something like that, but you skip the grade. You don't get to take it and skip it at the same time. We always start at zero. Just remember we're on a continuum, and I say this to you so you don't beat yourself up so much, and you and you don't malfunction yourself by thinking that there's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. Maybe you need to change some paradigms. Maybe you need to get stronger in some areas. Of course, I know I do. There's tons of areas. By the way, I officially did 50 push-ups the other day. I did 49 before. I said I did 50. I didn't. I actually did 49, and I remember that now. I did 50 officially yesterday. But I'm behind, because I should have done... What's the date? The 22nd. I should have done 62 yesterday. So I'm definitely behind. But I'm going to get caught I'm gonna get caught up here. I've been so busy with so many different things, but I want to get stronger. So we can all get stronger at everything, right? Sure we can. Okay, difference in major and minor blues chord progressions. So Partha, so here's the deal. If you're playing something in, in a major chord progression, right, which is like seventh chords, right, like this, like, um, okay. Let's do that one, okay. minor blues or major blues. Here's minor blues. six and that'll make it a little bit more major sounding but now when we're talking about a minor chord progression so you said major and minor chord progression so if we did this one right um let's see uh let's do this sorry
playing over a minor chord progression, a blues minor chord progression, which you could do the same chords, right? You could do like, if you did A7, D7, E7, which is your basic 12 bar blues chord progression. If you wanna know more about that on YouTube, search your guitar stage 12 bar blues, which is kind of what I was doing there, the very first one, the major one, right? But then if you wanted to play that in a minor sound, just make those chords minor. And you can play the same exact chord progression. So wherever you see an A7, play an A minor. Where you see a D7, play a D minor. Where you see an E7, play, a, play an E minor. And you can play the same 12 bar chord progression, but play it in a minor feel. And it's going to sound more like, um, you know, like, like, a, like a sad B.B. King tune. Or, you know what I mean? Like, a, oh God, I forget off the top of my head. But nonetheless, okay, there you go. Uh, did I, was there another donation that just came in? Think so, maybe? Tom, no, okay. Tom, Tom was the last one. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Uh, uh, play Radiohead, play Creep by Radiohead. God, I even forgot what the heck key was that. What was that? Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. I forget, I, I forget off the top of my head what key that's in. Radiohead, creep. We did. I did a cover of this right with my wife. You can check that out on YouTube. Search, um, search, Kirby, K E R B Y, and the Roaches, creep. We've got a song for that out there. I apologize. I don't know it off the top of my head. I'm, I can't even think right now. I've got blues so much in my brain. Um, Can you recommend a starting point for Joe Dispenza? Don, yes. Here, listen, everybody. If you at all interested in this, listen to me right now. Just watch episode one. If you if you think it's bunk, which it's not, it's just science. So if you think science is bunk, then okay, cool. Um, and if you think that the stuff that people have practiced for tens of thousands of years on their own without the science, and now science has come around and said, oh, well, now we understand how it works. Now you can believe it, friends. Um, if you're that, okay, then watch episode one of Rewired, R-E-W-I-R-E-D. It's on YouTube right now for free. They'll let you watch that one. If you follow my Twitter, then I'm going to be dropping those links in there one at a time so that you guys can do this like, uh, every, every single day. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, creep. Right. So, right. So, What the hell am I doing here? I don't belong here. That's right. Fun song, right? Um, so start there. Watch episode one of Rewired. If it hooks you like it hooked me, then either get Gaia TV or follow my links and I'll get you set up, okay? I wish I understood how quickly you get those backing tracks going. Esther, I'm using a looper pedal. That's what I'm doing. I'm using a looper pedal. Esther, you're in UGS. Watch the video series that we just dropped in there with Robbie Calvo. It's called The Phrase Trainer. Watch that. Buy a looper pedal. They're like 100 bucks. You can find them in my gear store. Link for that's down below. Get, get a looper for sure. In fact, I think the looper pedal should be the number one pedal that folks get, even before an overdrive, because you can do so much with it. You can play, you can compose right on the fly, and when you have somebody else there, boom, it, it, works, it works beautifully, you know what I mean? Okay, cool. Now, here we go. Friends, very quickly, we're past our time, right? We are past our time. So here's the deal. Friends, if you have not already, please like this video. If you have already, don't do it. Share it and subscribe. Jeff, thanks so much for, for the, the donation. I appreciate it, man. Very kind. Share it, like it. All that good stuff. We've got merch. Did I tell you this? We've got merch, friends. If you want merch, we've got it. And Mike who's in our YGS staff, you'll see them there as Mike Bess 5 with a wrench because he, he's a admin. Um, he has been creating some beautiful shirts for us, one for the veterans that, that looks amazing. So, uh, by the way, get in there, check that stuff out. I'll have the guys post that link. If you haven't watched the excuses video, I'll have Emmy or Jason drop that in there as well. And uh, so you got to check this stuff out. Mike, thank you so much for dropping that link in there. So go check that stuff out if you would, my friends. 
Um, tomorrow, what it is that we're talking about is if you're still having issues with strumming, try this. It's a little, a little trick that I've learned with my students over the years. And if you do this, it will, you, you're never going to, you're not going to mess up your strumming. It's going to get you over that hump. Okay. And then chord progressions that will work well together. Now that we've learned chords, we've learned how to transitions between chords, et cetera, et cetera. Let's talk about chords that will work together. I know you've got this question. You're like, but I don't know how to write a song. Guess what? You do. And if you take probably 90% of the most amazing songs out there, they consist of three or four chords that are really stable, that sound great. We're gonna talk about those chords. I'm gonna share this with you. I'm gonna show you in different keys and what have you. Your mind's gonna blow. It's gonna get messy. Bring them up, please. And I'm gonna show you how to do this, okay? Chords that work well together. That's what we're gonna talk about tomorrow. Friends, Two things you gotta do, you have to do. The very first link below is gonna get you the PDF, which is gonna guide you through everything we're doing here. It's also gonna give you access to some fun Tony Robbins stuff that I love, to some sad guru stuff. Uh, these are these are guys that I follow that uh, that just, you need them in your life as well as guitar. So I just thought, man, these are guys that I follow. You might as well, if you wanna like them, like them too, you know? Just for no reason other than they're great. Right? I'm just passing it on. Just like an animal that finds some food and he calls out to everybody else, hey, yo, check it out. That's what I'm doing for you guys, okay? So that's number, let's link one. one. Link number two, get in the Unstoppable Guitar System. If you don't want to go pro, that's, that's fine. Take advantage of all my free stuff because once you go through that, friends, no one can take that away from you and you're going to build such a solid foundation in your understanding of music and guitar that you are literally going to be able to go out and then once you're watching the YouTube videos now, after that, after you have that information, you're gonna have so much of a solid foundation that you're gonna be able to build off of that. If you don't have that, you don't have the foundation, you're wobbly, right? You're not gonna know what to do. You gotta have that solid foundation in everything. Okay, my friends, thank you so much for the donations today. Beautiful, you guys are so kind. Thank you for hanging in there with me. I do this as much for myself as I do it for you because I get so much out of it. I get jazzed from it. So thank you, thank you, thank you for all the great questions today. Uh, I want to guide you. I want to help you out. So I'm out of here tomorrow. I'll see you 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you so much to the YGS crew and everybody. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.